Hello guys, this is Pantsmice36. Today's video is going to be a tutorial in which we look at 5 weathering techniques I recommend every beginner should try to improve their skills. In this video I'm going to quickly explain and demonstrate how to do an oil pin wash, oil streaking effects, chipping, some basic spatter effects, and also how to do a really easy white wash. All the effects I'm showing you here are very straightforward and should give you some good experience towards improving your weathering skills, and weathering is probably the most difficult part of this hobby to master. This video was done in collaboration with David from Dave's Model Workshop. He's also doing a video just like mine where he's doing, you know, five basic weathering techniques he recommends every beginner should try. He's also got a great channel, you should check him out. And also watch his video because, you know, you'll also learn some more skills there. And I also think it'd be cool if other modelers on YouTube could make some videos like this as well, showing their five basic techniques they recommend beginners should try. Get some great community involvement in here and that'd be pretty awesome to help out our, you know, people who are trying to improve their skills. Now let's get into the techniques. First up, I'm going to be showing you how to do an oil pin wash. For this, we're going to need some enamel thinner or really anything that will thin oil paints. Here I'm using Wilder's Thinner. I'm also using some of the Wilder oil paints here, but of course you can use standard or artist oil paints. They'll work just fine. I've also got a couple of brushes here. I've got a very, very small one for the application of the paints. I've also got a larger one to do a little bit of cleanup afterwards. Now, like I said, I'm using the Wilder oils here because they dry faster, but you can also just use artist oil paints and Dave is going to show that in his video. So first I'm just pouring them into my little pellet here, just a little bit of oil paint. I want to get a nice dark brown color because that always looks nice. So I'm doing a mix of the black and brown oil paints. It's probably about two parts brown to one part black, but of course it kind of depends. You got to get an eye for this through some experience. But if your mix is looking too dark, you know, just add a little bit more of the brown paint to it and just keep on mixing. I'm just testing the consistency here in the color. Looks pretty good, but I've got to thin it down, obviously, so we're using some of the enamel thinner here. If you're using Artist Oil Paints, you can just get some Artist Oil Solvent at the Artist Store as well. That should work fine for you. So you want your pin wash to be decently thick, but not super thick. You want it to be, you know, obviously you want it to flow around a little bit, but you want it to still be opaque when you apply it. You can probably just tell just by looking at it how thin I've got it here. You can see it runs nicely, but it's still you know, brown, obviously. So we're just going to apply a little bit of it to the all the details in the tank. So weld seams, panel lines, all the rivets, everything like that. It'll make a nice little fake shadow around them and make them pop out more and make the tank seem larger than it is. So a good way to test to make sure you've got the right amount of thinner in there is when you just apply it like through rivets like that. You can see it just kind of flows around them, but it will stay there. And as you can see, it's definitely making a little bit of shadow effect. On the bow machine gun here, you can definitely see how the oil pin wash is accentuating the weld seams, making them obviously more apparent, and also just kind of making them look better because you got little shadows in there and emphasizes those details. And really, I'm just applying it to everywhere where there's, you know, a gap, a panel line, a, de a detail or anything like that. Just you can really put it anywhere. We're gonna go over later and clean it up. As you can see, I'm just kind of putting in all the weld seams here, details to the front. It can be a little bit messy because we're going to clean this up. Now you can see where all the places I've put the pin wash. Time to clean it up. So I'm using the large brush I showed you earlier. And we're just getting it lightly damp with some of the thinner we used to thin down the oil paints to make the wash. So I wiped off the brush on the paper towel there just to remove most of the thinner from it. But we still want a little bit on there just so we can do a little bit of cleanup. And I'm just really removing the pin wash from areas where I don't like where it's ended up. So I'm just kind of cleaning up where it was along the edge of that panel there. Then here obviously it's excessive so we're going to kind of clean that up and leave only a little bit just around the edges of that detail. Of course, you can keep going back, and if you've cleaned up too much, you can go back and add more oil paint afterwards and just kind of layer back and forth until you're at a point where you're happy with how it's come out. This is very straightforward. You just basically rub along the edges of details where the oil paint has ended up on the actual surface of the tank rather than the, the seams and the edges of the details where we want to leave the paint. Every once in a while, I'm, I'm lightly soaking my brush in the thinner again and then wiping it off just to clean up 
uh, any of the brown oil paints that's been absorbed into the actual brush. And here is the result on the tank. As you can see, now suddenly all the details are much more apparent. We also have this kind of shadowy effect that also may look like grease or just kind of crap that's built up on the tank. It's a really nice basic weathering technique and it's the thing I always do first. On the rear here I can show you, you're going to see this again through the whole video. On the left side I've done the effect, on the right side it's just still the green paint. And it's a good way to compare and uh, see the progression of our weathering through the video. And on both these tanks here I've also done brown pen washes, the same color basically. On any tank, I recommend a brown pen wash is the way to go. Just the first thing you should do. It'll really help you begin the weathering process. The next weathering effect we're going to look at is how to do some two-tone chipping by brush. Here I've got a lighter and darker color of the base coat in the tank, which was XF65 pretty much. And we're just going to make some kind of 3D-ish looking chipping effects to simulate some wear and tear in our tank. I'm using the same small brush I used to apply the pen wash actually. I'm getting some lighter paint to start with, and we're just going to kind of go in there and gently stipple on the tank to get those chipping shapes going. As you can see I'm not painting chipping shapes, that's a big key here. Don't make chips, just let the brush do it for you. You just gotta do a little bit of stippling there, back and forth with a little bit of paint, and then if you have a small enough brush like me, this is like 10 over 0 I think it is, it's like a four dollar brush at the art store basically, you just gently tap at it and the brush will make the chipping shapes for you. You don't want to actually paint Shipping, chipping shapes. Otherwise they'll be too big and it won't look realistic. It's very very easy to overdo this effect and honestly looking back I probably put too much of it on the bow gun there as you can see on the top of it. But you just want to put this on edges and places where the crew would walk around. So I'm putting a lot under the hatch here for the driver because when he walks to the tank he's gonna walk up here and scrape it up with his muddy boots or any sticks or anything he's got on his boots as well. Here I'm doing a little bit of scraping. Uh, this is the same thing really, you just scrape your brush in a line instead of stippling. You want to have very, very, very little paint on your brush. It's tempting to try to do that in one go with like a huge amount of paint on your brush and just make a line. It'll, it'll be too big. You want to get a little bit of brush, uh, a little bit of paint on your brush, and then just gently build it up over like, you know, five or six strokes. And here I'm just doing a little more chipping on details in the front there. On those little rivets, you saw me just highlight them with a little bit of the paint. It's basically just chipping, but also kind of makes the details a little more obvious. Just think about where the crew would walk around and hold onto things, and where the tank would bump into bushes and, and anything like that, and that'll give you a good idea to start where the chips would be. So now we're going to actually go in and add a little bit of depth to the inside of those chips. So I'm using the darker color there, which is XF13, and we're just going to apply a little bit of chipping basically inside the larger chips we already made. So it's the same thing as before, you're just doing this inside the chips you already did. And don't do it inside every single one because it'll get a little bit excessive. You just want to pick maybe the largest ones, and then do a little bit in there, and less is more with this really. You just want to do a little bit. And the lighter green and the darker green we're doing here kind of works together to make a little bit of a 3D effect. And as you can see now, suddenly the chipping kind of pops out, looks much more real. Once again, we're working on those scrapes there very very gently with a little bit of paint and then you can see it builds up and here's our tank with the chipping complete on the front there's many other ways you can do chipping you can do it with a sponge as dave's going to show in his video you can do it with hairspray you can do it with salt many different ways but this is probably the most basic way well sponge shipping is basically the same thing honestly but this is a great way to emphasize details make just like a lived on look in your tank where the crew's been opening hatches and working on the thing and the tank's been bumping into stuff and just seen combat. Now on German tanks here, or tanks that are yellow, basically do the same effect, but use a light yellow and then instead of a dark yellow, use a dark reddish color instead to simulate primer. The next effect we're going to look at is a dot filter. This is a very easy way to make some nice streaking effects on your tank. We're going to use the wilder oils again, but I'm also going to show you how to use artist oils because artist oils are probably easier for you to get. Just the wilder oils are faster to work with as I'm going to show you here in a second. So I put the oil paints out on a little piece of paper towel here. This is to help absorb the linseed oil out of them. So the wild oils there, those are pretty dry, but then this one here as you can see all that yellowy oil came out. That's the linseed oil. Usually that would be absorbed by the canvas, um, but since our tank is made of canvas, it's made of plastic, that won't be absorbed. And that's what keeps the oil paint liquid in the tube. 
So you want to get that out of there, basically, to make the oil paint dry. So uh, Artist Oil, I recommend you get this brand here, Windsor Newton, if you're using these Artist Oil paints. It's basically the same thing, you just put it out here. As you can see, you, it's a little bit kind of squishy at first. And then you leave it out for maybe three to five hours. And then now you can see the linseed oil has soaked out of it. The wilder oils that happens basically immediately as you saw when I poured it out, the linseed oil separated. And that's the difference. The wilder oils, you can work with them right away because the linseed oil separates. The standard artist oils wait three to five hours and then start. The paint will have dried slightly, it'll be easier to apply, and then the linseed oil will be gone. If you don't remove the linseed oil, the paint won't really dry. It'll take, you know, a long time. I know people who say they still have oil paint wet on their model for years after they've weathered it. And no, I'm not being paid to say that. Um, so let's get back to this. As you can see, I'm applying the red, the green, and the blue oil paints just everywhere. That's going to be general streaking, discoloration effects once we get down to the actual, you know, finishing up this technique. The whiter, the whiter oil paint, the light buff, as you can see, I'm applying that around the upper surface of the tank there, and also underneath the details. That's to simulate rain streaks, it'll appear much lighter. And then the brown, as you can see, I'm applying now, I'm keeping that underneath those details. This is going to simulate just kind of like dirty crap that's just kind of getting run down. And overall, you can really just use any color because these effects are going to be so uh, light at the end, so faint. That's just going to appear like general streaking effects, but I'm just being artsy here and kind of giving you some ideas about where you can apply these paints. So here I'm using the same thinner as before, and we're just going to wipe most of it off, like as much off as you can get. And then we gently rub back and forth. I'm using a very, very large, well not very large, it's like maybe like half a centimeter wide, but it's fairly large in our hobby basically. I'm just gently rubbing up and down to get rid of those dots. Also, try to keep the dots as small as you can when you're applying them, but now I'm just kind of gently rubbing them down. As, as you can see, suddenly they kind of become streaky, and as you keep going back and forth, they'll become very, very faint streaking effects. Now, it's easy to completely erase them. Uh, you just need a little bit of experience to tell the point when you need to stop, but you want them to be as faint as possible without completely erasing them. But here I'm not really showing any editing of this, I'm actually just giving an idea of how many times I'm going over it, I'm trying to keep this um, as obvious as it is to you guys to see how much streaking I do to get those streaks to the point where you want them to be. Also, some people always ask me, like, how long do I leave the paints, or the, the dots of paint on the model before I start streaking? Um, I did it right away, and I often do it right away, but you can wait maybe an hour or so. It doesn't really matter, just basically try it out on a spare piece of plastic first and see what works well for you, then try that on your model. But this isn't very difficult, I'm just doing basically up and down motions with a little bit of, a tiny little bit of thinner on my brush. Just blending out these little dots and then we get this overall kind of streaky, dusty, not clean, I'm going to call it, effect in our tank. And here's the result. There are two key things to this effect, basically. First, put the oil paints out in a paper towel so that the linseed oil soaks out. Second of all, use only a tiny, tiny bit of oil paint thinner on your brush. Otherwise, the effect won't go well for you. If you can get both those straight, and then just put the dots in your tank and then streak it down, you're set. Um, it's just basically very, very faint streaking effects. And as I said before, if you accidentally erase it all, you can just do it again. Put more dots on and just try it again. Now we're going to look at making some speckling effects or spatter effects, or whatever you want to call them. I find this is a great way to blend in some uh, areas of pigment on your tank. Now in David's video, he's going to cover pigment application. And as you can see on mine here, I've applied basically dark pigment and light pigment. It looks like wet and dry, muddy, dusty effects. But there's really nothing tying the two together, or at least to my eye at least. So we're going to make a little bit of this spattery mixture. So I've got a dark pigment here, very, very dark brown. And then we're just going to thin it down basically and make a thick, muddy paste. Now this spatter or speckling effect, or whatever you want to call it, is basically to simulate mud being flicked up. So we're just going to make some muddy consistency pigment slurry. That looks pretty good right there, I'm just testing it out. And same thing here with our light color, this is Mig Ammo's Dry Mud, which is a really nice pigment, I actually like the color a lot. And once again, a little bit of thinner on there. It gets really dark when I thin it down, but it will dry back to the same color it is in the jar. 
So we're just putting some thinner in and then we're gonna mix it up. Now some people are gonna ask me, as they always do in the comments, can I use water for this? And the answer is not really because water has too much surface tension, so it won't spatter nicely. It'll be big blobs and you don't want that. So you wanna get some enamel thinner. Any kind will work. You can use MIG ammo, AK Interactive, Wild, or anything like that should work fine. So we're just going to take some of our lighter mixture here, which is going to simply dry mud spatter. Take a little bit on our brush. This is a kind of long brush, helps with the spattering effects. And I'm just flicking it with my finger. And that will make these little spattery effects spray over the tank. As you can see, they dry almost like right away. That was maybe 10 second cut right there and they're already dry. Because when you first flick them on, you'll see these big wet spots with the enamel thinner. That will instantly be absorbed into the pigment that's already on the tank, leaving just the actual pigment blob on the inside. And once it dries, you'll start to see those little specks of the spatter effect appear. Now we're going to work on with the darker pigment, which is going to simulate the same thing, but just wet mud spatter. And we're just going to, again, flick it with our finger, flick the bristles of the brush. We're just flicking back and forth, and as you can see, suddenly they appear, and then they'll, they'll start to dry. And if you go too hard on this, you know, you can just put more pigment on and cover it up and start again. But you want to keep the wet spatter effects lower down, and the dry ones higher up. This effect makes sense. Basically, I'm just taking the same pigments that I would use to make, you know, the dusty effects in the tank. And I'm mixing them with thinner to make them liquid. Then I flick them on and then they dry and they just look like all the other pigments on the tank because that's what they are. They're just the pigment. The thinner disappears and isn't really important except for you just need it to be able to flick it on. And it's that flicking motion that gives us this realistic looking spattered mud pattern, which is actually what it is. We're making our own mud out of the same pigments we used for the dirt and the dust and then we're spattering it on. And this is just how mud and stuff works in real life. The final effect I recommend beginners should try to improve their skills is winter whitewash chipping with hairspray. This is probably very intimidating to some, but it's actually a lot easier than you'd think. So I'm going to give you a quick demo here and show you it's really easy. So I'm using this Tresemme Ultra Fine Mist hairspray. It's what Michael Rinaldi uses, that's what I use. I know nothing but hairspray, so he gave me the idea. Uh, we're about a foot away from the tank, as you can see about the length of the can. Make sure you shake it well, and then we're just applying some light misting passes. You don't want to cover the tank. You, it's like when you airbrush, you know, you don't want to pull the paint up on the surface. You want it to be very, very thin. And then we apply one coat, let it dry, and then now we're applying the second coat. And by let it dry, I mean wait like 60 seconds. You can see this semi-gloss sheen on the tank. That's a good idea that we have applied a nice amount of hairspray. Now for our paint, I'm using X20 thinner. I'm applying the thinner first, as you should do. Now, again, I'm using my little paintbrush here as a pouring guide. You might, you might have seen me doing that earlier. It helps you just not make a mess. And then XF2 flat white is going to be our white mixture, so we're going to take some of that and we're just going to put it in. And once again, use like a paintbrush or something to help you pour, because then you won't make a mess and you have much better control. And then I went back and applied a little more thinner after this. I was at a ratio of, of a, I think looking back, approximately maybe 70% thinner to 30% paint. You want it to be a little more thin than usual because you want this effect to be very, very thin. And now I'm just applying very, very thin coats, you know, up and down passes to simulate how it would be applied in real life. Probably with a mop actually, but when we chip it, it'll look much better. So I'm just going back and forth, airbrushing this streaking kind of effects. You can just apply it any way you want, but I'm just trying to be kind of a little more realistic, I guess, here with the up and down motions. But you don't need any fine skills. You can stand a foot back and just blast your tank white and then chip at it afterwards. It doesn't really matter. So the key is not to cover the tank with like a huge layer. You want it to be very, very, th well, not super thin, but you want to be able to see the green showing through in some areas. Otherwise, it's not going to chip very well. Now we're using some brushes and some other shish kebab stick here to chip at it. Basically, I just get a little bit of water on my brush, as you can see here, and then wipe most of it off in the paper towel. And then we're going to start the chipping process. Now what's happening is the water is soaking through the top layer of white paint, which is why you got to keep that paint not super thick, because you want the water to be able to soak through it. 
Now once it soaks through that, it'll go find the hairspray. And since hairspray is water soluble because you can wash it out of your hair, then the hairspray starts to dissolve and it removes the white paint on top of it. And that gives you this chipping effect. So I'm using my small brush here to kind of work at the edge of this engine panel here because I figured, well, the crew is going to work on the engine so this area is going to be chipped up. So in real life, the whitewash paint was usually a very, very weak paint mixture, so it would often chip very heavily. But still keep in mind, earlier when we were working on the actual chipping of the base green, we kept it around the areas where the crew would walk and where the crew would like open hatches and panels and doors and stuff like that. So keep it mainly on the edges because those areas obviously see more wear. But flat surfaces will see wear and tear too when the crew walks over it. So the shish kebab stick is a great way to do some other kind of scraping chippy effects. If you're having trouble breaking through the top surface, a couple of quick pokes with the shish kebab stick will damage the paint enough that you can kind of have a place to start the actual chipping from. When you start with the brush, it will kind of begin from there and work around. And also areas where you want to simulate maybe the crew's been dragging boxes of ammunition up the side of the tank. Quick scrapes with the hot with the um, shish, shish kebab stick will work well. Just don't use your hobby knife because it's way too sharp and it will cut right through down to like the plastic. As you can see, it's really as easy as it looks. I'm just taking my brush, which is slightly wet, and just rubbing at the paint and it starts to chip. It's really that easy. And it looks super awesome. And keep in mind that like one third of the war in Russia was winter. So lots of tanks are, you know, whitewashed and stuff like that. And it's pretty fun. Now technically, or apparently, you can actually wait like an infinite amount of time to do this chipping effect because the paint will, if you use like X20 thinner, it won't ever be fully cured strong enough that the water won't be able to penetrate through. But I always just wait like about 10 minutes. I basically paint the white, clean my airbrush, and then come back and start the chipping process. But of course I'm using Tamiya paint and that dries you know, fairly quickly. So 10 minutes or so is what I recommend waiting before you begin the chipping process with the water here. And also like a pin wash on top of this will have a nice effect at the end because you know a nice wash on the white will make it look nice and grimy. You can also use some white oil paints or some brown oil paints to simulate some kind of messy streaky effects of the white paint because usually this was applied with a mop and it was a really crappy distempered mix of paint. On the rear here I did a little bit of a different style of winter camouflage it's more like little camel squiggles but they're done the exact same way I airbrushed them on and then did a little bit of gentle rubbing over them with my wet brush. That kind of had a little bit of a, a wear and tear effect on them. So that's it for my top five weathering techniques. I recommend beginners should try to improve their skills or learn something new or just to get inspired. Even if you weren't a beginner, maybe learn something new or got a new idea for a technique or something like that. Always awesome to see your comments below. Much appreciated and uh, thanks for watching, of course. So I hope you enjoyed David's video as much as you did mine because it's going to be, you know, his top five weathering techniques he recommends for beginners as well. And he's going to show some other techniques and also some of the same ones I showed here with his own spin on them, which I recommend you look at because, you know, it's always like it's always good to see other people's views on the same thing to give you some kind of other ideas because not everybody does the same technique in the same way. Also, a big shout out goes to my patrons, Ricky from Ryan's Painting, Samuel Murphy, John Butler, and Ian Sustrick. They give me a few dollars every month, which helps me buying products and stuff like that and kits uh, for you guys to see in these videos because, as you guys know, this hobby isn't the cheapest thing in the world. So as always, thanks for watching very much, guys. This is Pansmar36, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.